Welcome to the Juki J150 QVP assembly video. This video is designed to touch on the highlights of assembling the table with the extension leaf, install the control module, and setting the sewing head. Tabletop assembly. Please note our assembly process was completed using a padded workbench for easier videoing. The assembly of the table and unit may be completed on the floor. Please take precautions to protect the surface of the table. Start with the larger of the two boxes turning it face down and cutting through the tape on all four sides. If you are working on the floor, you may easily flip this over. Working on a tabletop assistance to flip this over is recommended. Remove the top and then remove individual pieces. Some portions are not required and may be discarded after assembly is completed. Place the two larger pieces side by side, face down as shown in the video. Set aside any loose parts. Secure the piano hinge connecting the top surface and the extension leaf flipping over the half and unattached half of the piano. Hand align it with the pre-drilled screw holes in the extension leaf. You need a Phillips screwdriver, a power screwdriver, or a controllable drill with Phillips driver bit. Start at one end and begin screwing in the screws. Take your time and do not rush. Next, you will be installing the pullout drawer. Two plastic rails are provided with six screws. Place the rails as shown in the video. There are pre-drilled holes for the rails. Do not tighten the screws until you have checked the movement of the drawer. Control box assembly. The control box is in the larger box marked Juki J150 QVP with a picture of the sewing machine head on the side. Lay the box on its side and cut through the tape on the bottom of this box. Slash the tape where you find staples indentations. We recommend using needle nose pliers. To remove the staples, using this method, Place your hand near the staples on the cardboard. Do not place your hand over the staples. Then grasp the staples with the needle nose pliers and pull straight out. Once all flaps are free, fold them back out of the way in preparation for lifting off the box. Assistance with the flap closest to the floor may be needed. Now lift up the box. The content will remain on the floor. A couple of loose packaging pieces of cardboard may come dislodged and fall to one side. These will be discarded. Gather any loose bags of parts and set aside. The top styrofoam pack contains the control module. Cut the tape at the joint line and lift off half of the styrofoam packaging. Locate a long bolt with mated washer, lock washer, and nuts. 
The bolt will be inserted from the top as shown here. A rubber mallet is recommended for tapping these bolts into place. The use of a metal hammer may cause it to slip and damage the surface of your table. If you do not have either available, you may insert the bolt and press it as firmly as you can, then install the washer and the regular knot onto the backside and tighten them down. This will help seat the bolt into position. The rest of the seating of the bolt will be handled when the control module is tightened in place. With the bolt securely in place as shown in the video, remove the control module from the other half of the styrofoam and place it on the four bolts. The silver side of the control module should be facing the opening in the tabletop. Now secure the washers, lock washers, and nuts on each bolt, tightening down as needed. Table leg assembly. Carefully cut the straps and the tape on the table leg box. This box also contains a Juki branded cross brace, the foot pedal mounting rail, and the foot pedal assembly. The legs consist of a lower and upper part. Both are marked to indicate left or right. The upper part is the smaller of the two pieces and will be bolted to the tabletop as shown here. There are dimples in the wood to assist with placement. Attach the upper legs using the provided screws. A washer that is not provided is recommended if you will be moving your unit to raise and utilize the extension leaf. When installing the feed or the casters, be sure to place the lower covers on first. To set the lower portion of the legs, you will need the small L brackets and bolts. Insert the brackets from the inside of the leg and position to match openings. Insert bolts to hold but do not tighten. Measure the height and set the leg at about 27 inches. If installing with casters, set at the lowest point, as the casters at approximately 3 inches of height. Once you have determined the height, tighten the bolts. Installing the Juki branded cross brace is next. Set one bolt on each side, then install the rest and tighten. Remember, the brand should be upside down when installing at this time.
Now let's install the mounting rail for the foot pedal. If you have smaller fingers, as our installer does, you may handle the nut placed through the slot. If you need more space and you have installed the feet already, remove the front foot and cap as shown in the video. Bring the rail forward and set the screw and nut plate do not tighten until you move the rail back into position. Pedal assembly. Our model picture shows a left side installation of the pedal. We will show you a right side installation as most home users are comfortable using the right foot. This is a mechanical pedal which activates three functions. Run, lift presser foot, and cut depending on its position. Begin by installing the L brackets which hold the pedal. From the left side, measure approximately 8 inches and secure this bracket in place. Install the pedal bracket interface. This is an L shaped metal plate with several slots to allow for position adjustments when attaching to the pedal. Do not tighten these bolts. Now set the other bracket in place but do not tighten. Raise the pedal and place the one rod end into the left fixed bracket. While steadying the pedal, adjust the right bracket into position and then tighten the bolt. Attach the driver rod to the pedal and tighten. This is a two part assembly with two adjustment screws and swivel heads at either end. The pedal should be able to move the drive rod up and down. In the up heel down position, it should be able to contact two switches as shown here. Now set the L-shaped metal plate so the drive rod is straight up and down and tighten the screws. Check for proper operation again. Now set the power switch. You will want to set it back from the front edge about 3 quarters and from the side about 1 inch. There are no pre-drilled holes so you may adjust the location as needed. Machine head assembly. If you are working on the floor, roll the table forward onto its face and not onto the leaf as this will damage the leaf hinge. Now that the table is upright, unpack the remaining pieces from the styrofoam packaging. From the small bag of parts, find the two small gray corner inserts two black corner pads, and two gray with metal machine hinge. The two gray corner pieces go in the front opening, matching the cutouts already in the top. The two black pieces go on the back to the tabs, and the machine hinge pieces go into the rectangle openings in the back side as shown here. Use the enclosed nails to secure these pieces in place. 
To assist with the holding of the nails, a needle nose plier is recommended. Be careful in striking the nails as you do not want to damage the surface of the table. Set the metal hinge points on the surface. Do not put them back in place just yet. Now place the bottom tray in its position. Please be sure that it goes in with the door opening on your left. Remove the styrofoam and unwrap the machine. Gently lift the machine out and carefully set it on the table surface. Now you're ready to set the machine in place. As this machine has some weight, assistance in handling and setting the machine in place is recommended. Leave the cords curled up for now. Insert the two silver hinge points. Simply set the machine matching in place. The machine bed should sit flush to the table surface. Now it's time to carefully feed the cables through the opening in the table just behind the machine. This may be done in any order, but please be careful not to bend or kink any of the smaller cables. Congratulations, you have now finished the assembly of the table, control module, and machine setting portion of this installation process.